So I'm going to break down the whole UFC 299 card. Jesus, sorry about that. So we had the first fight of the night, which was Marina Moroz versus Joanne Wood. Not Calder Wood, just Wood. Uh, Wood gets it done. She retires. That's it. Awesome for her. Congratulations, what a career. Moving on, we had CJ Vergara versus Arabulov. As a, sorry, i got to check what his name is again. I don't want to mispronounce his name. Azu Almabayev, sorry. Really good performance from Almabayev. Sort of just wins with his wrestling here. Uh, yeah, good win for him. It was a good performance by him over CJ Vergara. But, uh, yeah, nothing, nothing too crazy in my opinion. I know, I, I've seen people saying, yeah, I heard the commentators say, yeah, yeah, this might be a fight for Pantoja. I didn't think he looked that good. But we'll see what happens in the future. Then we had Rebellus Despange versus Josh Parisian. I mean, are we fucking surprised? You put a big fat fucking behemoth, <laughs> big fat guy against a fucking behemoth. Like Despange. Despange is going to kill all these fat guys in the uh, heavyweight division. I'm pretty confident in saying that. Just too long, too powerful. Uh, it's going to be until the rankings, until this guy gets a tough fight. Unless he has just no takedown defense or no chin. So I guess we'll find out. But I think he's going to just knock out a bunch of fatties on his rise up. Uh, but yeah, not really much else to say about this performance. Uh, you know, <laughs> it was 18 seconds. Good performance, good debut. We'll see what happens next. Then we had Ayan Kutala. Oh, sorry. We had Michelle Pahaya versus Michelle Olachechik. This was a really good performance uh, by Bahia here. You know, kicked up the body, beat the shit out of the body of Olachechik. I thought Olachechik was going to break him, but, you know, Michelle Bahia just got that shit done early. Fucking good performance. He looked amazing out there. That was the best performance of Michelle Pereira's career. Against probably the toughest opponent he's faced, in my opinion. I think Olachechik is, like, generally really good. Like, he's a tough bastard. He's never been ran through like that. And Pahaya just ran through him like he was nothing. It's a really good performance there uh, by Pahaya. I'd love to see him get a ranked opponent next to middleweight, but uh, that's definitely his division for sure. It was so smooth how he did it. Hurts him to the body, then wraps his head, wraps his arm around the neck, and yeah, gets a submission. The Medayan Kutalaba versus Felipe Linz. Uh... You know, good performance from uh, Felipe Linzia. Leg kick performance, a lot of good leg kicks. It was just leg kick, leg kick. He was beating him up. It was really good uh, game plan from him. We don't really see him in implement leg kicks quite a lot. But against Ayan Kutalaba, or Eon, I don't know how which one it's pronounced, but it was really working it against Kutalaba. Uh, you'll look at the total strikes and you'll see, wow, Eon got 119 total strikes, but they were all like, Peter Patter shots when he was like taken down or clinched up. Uh, wasn't like the greatest fight or anything like that, but good game plan. Felipe Lins 4 0 now in the uh, light heavyweight division. So, I don't know, I guess you gotta give the guy a ranking, right? Or a ranked opponent. Be interesting to see who they give him next. Then we had Pedro Muniz versus Kyla Phillips. Kyla Phillips looked fucking amazing in this fight. Uh, the MMA Factory. I think, that's, uh, I think that's where Sean O'Malley and Kyla Phillips are from. That gym... Uh, yeah. Absolutely uh, on a fucking good run at the moment, that gym. They got plenty of good bantamweights. Obviously, they got the champ, Sean O'Malley, the Kyla Phillips, Mario Batista, uh, Marcus McGee. Like, all of these good up-and-coming bantamweights all seem to be out of this gym. So, it does worry me a little bit that maybe these guys aren't going to fight. But uh, I think I think they'll, they'll do what they're told, I guess. But, uh, yeah, good performance by Kyla Phillips. He looked better than Cheeto Vera did against uh, Pedro Munoz, in my opinion. I, I thought he looked a lot better than uh, Cheeto did. Obviously, stars make fights, but Kyla Phillips, his cardio didn't look like there was any problems with his cardio. He fought at a high pace. He looked really good. Uh, hurt Pedro Munoz more than we've probably seen Pedro Munoz get hurt before. And, yeah, clear, clear victory. So, good job of... By Kyla Phillips. I believed in this guy. I picked him against Song Yudong, so I'm glad to see him win. Then we had Mateus Gamro versus Rafael Dos Anjos. 
Gamrot wins, but it was a horrible performance by him. He should not be getting knocked down by 39-year-old Rafael de Sanchez at this point. I, don't, I can't even remember the last time Rafael de Sanchez got a knockdown on someone. Besides today. But yeah, he knocked down Gamrot. They also, I think they all gave him 30-27, which is weird because, I mean, DeSantis literally knocked him down, but still, I think there was a 30-27 in there, I might be wrong, but yeah, Gamrot wins, but it was a horrible performance, he made that fight way too fucking close, like, I guess outside of the first round, I wasn't that close, but like, still, DeSantis dropping you at this point in his career is crazy to see, because he's become more of a, stall, a stalling type of guy himself. Uh, but not in this fight. Not in this fucking fight. Uh, he always knocks him out cold. But uh, Gamrock gets it done. I don't rate him. He looks awful every fight, but he somehow manages to win. So, I mean, respect to him, but he's he gets knocked down every fucking fight. That Once that chin goes, he's fucked. I'm just going to say that. I mean, obviously, his chin's not that good because he's getting dropped so much, but he's, once that recovery goes, he's fucked, I should say. Then we have Chikagian versus Macy Barber. Good performance by Barber, close fight, back and forth, you know, good clinch attacks from Barber, a lot of elbows. Moving on, we had Curtis Blades versus Jonathan Almeida. I picked Curtis Blades here. You know, I've been saying, Jonathan Almeida can't take shots. It's why he always is shooting, because he just can't be standing there or taking shots. And we see it in this fight, as soon as he eats a shot, he's rocked. And then he eats about a hundred, well not a hundred, that's an exaggeration. He's about six shots to the temple while he's going in for a takedown and he's out. Good KO by Curtis Blades, I predicted it. And yeah, Almeida is not a heavyweight. But he is fucking freakishly strong. He was ragdolling Curtis Blades in that first round. So he was doing a lot better than I thought he would. I was expecting Curtis Blades to maybe stuff some takedowns early. He did do a sprawl, but then afterwards... You know, it was very one-sided, it was looking like. But then Blades just KOs him in the second. Then we had Peter Yarn. It was a Song Yadong. Good performance by Peter Yarn. Clearly wins this fight. A lot of good body rips in this fight. A lot of good uppercuts. He's working that boxing style against Song Yadong. You know, Song Yadong was looking good, but Peter Yarn's got a good chin on him. Even better defense. You know, none of those shots landed too clean. And uh, gets a 29-28, clear decision. I'm glad that it went to Peter Yarn. He's finally on a win streak again. Well, he's on a win. I reckon do Peter Yarn versus Chido Vera. I reckon that's a good fight. We had JDM versus Gilbert Burns. I spoke about this briefly in another video I made that uh, has been uploaded, thankfully. And uh, yeah, JDM gets a comeback KO, knocks out... Gilbert Burns. I thought JDM clearly won the first round, but two of the judges... Uh, for some reason, uh, one of the judges gave it to Gilbert... Two of the judges, I should say, sorry, gave it to Gilbert Burns. I don't know how the fuck they managed that. I thought that was pretty clear to JDM, but... Miami judges, Gilbert Burns from Miami. Probably some corruption at play there. But JDM gets a comeback KO, knocks him out cold. Um, late, late stoppage. Dan Mergliotta was trying to kill Gilbert Burns, it seemed like. Uh, then we had MVP versus Kevin Holland. Masterclass by MVP. He looked fucking good, alright? He looked really good out there. That was a really good performance by MVP. I didn't expect him to look so good, but he was just dominating Kevin Holland everywhere. Took him down a few times. Rocked him a few times. He just... He put on a masterclass. I didn't expect that, but MVP's the real deal. You know, against strikers, it's going to be hard for these guys against him. I thought Kevin Arnold would clip him or something like that, but against strikers, it's going to be hard. We'll see if his takedown defense has improved like when he fights like the actual wrestlers of the division. But it was a good performance. You know, and this is good to have him win because he, he brings a lot more hype, in my opinion. He's older. We're probably not going to get see many much more from MVP. You know, Kevin Holland can rebound, get better from this. He's younger. But MVP, he's, it's now or never for him. So I'm not too mad that he won. You know, I got my pick wrong, but it was a great performance. I'd love to see MVP versus Ian Gary or something like that. I feel like that would be a really good fight. Could also be boring, two counter-type strikers. But I thought this fight would be boring, and it wasn't. So we'll see. We'll see what MVP has. But great performance by MVP. Did an Undertaker uh, walkout as well, which was interesting. 
Uh, but unlike Izzy, you know, he actually put on a good performance, so, you know, it's acceptable. Uh, then we had Dustin Poirier versus Benoit Saint-Denis. I picked Dustin Poirier to get this one done by KO. And he got it done by KO. Now, I didn't... Okay, I, I picked him by TKO slash KO. Jesus Christ. My hair's fucking falling out. Because of this fucking headphones. I thought that he was going to get, like, a TKO. You know, I didn't think he was going to actually, like, knock him out cold. But... Dustin Poirier knocks him out cold in the second round. One thing that did annoy me, though, from Dustin, what Dustin Poirier was doing, stop going for them fucking guillotines, man. You need to get the guillotines out of your arsenal. Just don't do them ever again, Dustin Poirier. You know, you're, he almost cost himself that fight multiple times in that fight because he just kept going for guillotine after guillotine. It was not a good look for him uh, at all. But... He did eventually KO. He, he rocked him a few times on the feet. Then would jump guillotines. And it's like, you're giving Benoit saint these time to recover. Like, it, it was just so silly of him to do. But Dustin Poirier is still that guy. He knocks out Benoit saint Denis in the second round, out cold. Which, you know, it sucks to see. Because Benoit saint Denis is such a fun fighter. And who knows if his chin is going to be the same after that. But still a really fun fight. Good performance. And I'm sure Benoit saint Denis will be back. He's a tough bastard, but... You know, it is sad to see him lose, but good performance by Dustin Poirier. Maybe it's Dustin versus Islam next. I guess we'll find out and see, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. Oh, sorry. Jesus Christ, sorry. Then we had the main event. <laughs> we had the main event. Uh, Dustin Poirier. Sorry, I got like CTE from like watching those fights. We had Sean O'Malley, speaking of CTE. Sean O'Malley versus Gino Vera, number two. Uh... Not close at all, man. Not close at all. Sean O'Malley's show to that first fight was a fluke. We all thought it, like, come on, be real. We all thought that first fight was a fluke. And, well, it was proven. This was a fluke. You know, that was a fluke. That's not, most times out of 10, that's not going to happen to Sean O'Malley. And he showed it. He beat the absolute shit out of Chido Vera. Made him almost KO Cheeto Vera. That's the most hurt we've seen Cheeto Vera as well. So that's really impressive by Sean O'Malley. If he can hurt Cheeto Vera, who can eat fucking bombs after bombs, that, that makes me interested in matchups against like Marab. Is Marab a better fighter than Cheeto Vera? Yes. But is he as durable? I don't think so. So, you know, it does make Marab versus Sean O'Malley a bit more interesting. Sean O'Malley's cardio looked really good. He was throwing so many shots. He was upping the ante every round as well beating up Chino Vera, not competitive at all, it was an absolute masterclass, but uh, obviously I think Marab's still a tough, tough matchup for uh, Sean O'Malley, but you know, fights, we don't have fights on paper, we actually have the matchups happen and we see what happens, so who knows man, Sean O'Malley impressed me in this fight, I know it's Chino Vera, did he really even deserve a title shot, no, not at all. But it was a good performance. That was generally a fucking masterclass. That was better than uh, Cody Garbrandt versus Dominic Cruz as well. I know obviously the circumstances are a bit different. But that's one. That's the best bantamweight title performance I've ever seen. Like, but we also got to put in context. Cheeto Vera shouldn't have been fighting for the title, but that just that was one of the best title defenses of all time, especially in bantamweight. Like he made Cheeto Vera look like a bum. And you can say Chido Vera didn't deserve that title shot, but he's not a bum. Chido Vera is a really good fighter. And he beat the fucking brakes off him. Hurt him. Hurt his eye. Uh, kicked him up. A lot of good body attacks, which I like to see out of Sean O'Malley. I loved his whole game plan for this fight. Good, good performance by Sean O'Malley. Called for Ilya Taporio or Marab. Be interesting to see what he gets. He probably shouldn't get a champion fight yet. But I don't know if he beats Marab, so it's like, which one do you do? You know, at the end of the day, it's a Georgian next for him. More than likely, he's going to be fighting a Georgian. But, uh, yeah, if he can beat Marab, man, I don't know who the fuck beats him in that bantamweight division because Marab's his toughest fight. And if he can beat Marab, then, you know, it's Umar probably who's his toughest fight. And who knows if Umar even beats Sandhagen. So it is interesting to see where this division goes. But great performance. Sean O'Malley's the defending bantamweight champion, so good on him. Uh... Yeah, that's all I've got to say. Awesome card. This was fucking great card. Best card of the year so far. By far. By far best card of the year so far. Like, that was just fucking banger after banger. So, yeah. Awesome card. Every fight delivered. Some fights even over-delivered. So, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you like this video. Give me your thoughts on the card below. If you're not already subscribed, subscribe. Because if you made it this far, you might as well subscribe, right? 
And uh, yeah, share this video and I'll see you guys next time. Let's get this channel bigger, better. And yeah, I'll see you guys next video. Cheers, peace.